designed for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm-hmm. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, digs men specialist. Oh, a couple things to talk about before we get started tonight. No guest. Oh, thank Christ. Less work for me. Uh, watch the uh, debate out here. I know it's not uh, so interesting to uh, people in other parts of the country, but uh, uh, everyone looked okay. Cruz Bustamante just sort of, uh, eh, he didn't look like anything. But uh, I, Ariana Huffington, just, uh, she's, I am, oh, I understand why her husband went gay, by the way. <laughs> and I, I don't. I mean, I think she made him she blow it. guys. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, what a pain in the ass. Uh-huh. Nobody's more impressed with herself, by the way, than her. Jesus Christ. You take a woman to give her half a sense of humor and she can't get over it. She, oh, and it's just the it's same old sort of um, worn, worn platitude she spills out. Oh, she's a pain in the ass. And uh, Arnold did. Uh, I thought Arnold did surprisingly well. He quitted it. himself uh, well. And... Uh, yeah, Tom McClintock, I think, was probably uh, probably the best. And then, you know, the Green Party guy, ironically, the the Green Party people always seem more angry than everybody else. Right. I, I don't know what it is that you, you think a guy who's chained himself to a tree or who, uh, who loves wildlife, loves everything, doesn't want to hurt anything. These guys always seem to be the most pissed. Well, it's you'd be pissed, too, if you could see what the world was doing to... Okay, mm. that, that's the... That's mm. the mm. When reality is they're pissed because somebody beat the crap out of them, and they're, they're going to find people to do that to them in real life. Right. Uh. I had, uh, had another one of my favorite things, which is... is uh, here, here, anyone who listens to the show know I, I like to drive. I like to, I like to keep a certain momentum. When I drive, and uh, eighty-five miles an hour to be exact. Well, yeah, I live up in a canyon, and I've uh, done a little research. If I get trapped behind someone who's not moving too good down that canyon, wow, it is a big difference in time from the top of the canyon to the bottom of the canyon. And tonight, I got behind some guy. Was in a truck, and he was going seventeen, eighteen miles an hour, and he was hitting the brakes a lot. It kind of looked like he was looking for an address or something. So when the intersection opened up at the stop sign. Mm big three-way sort of uh, intersection. I just uh, slid right past him and uh, hauled ass down the hill. Well, then, naturally and ironically, and this is that, I, I see now I'm seeing his headlights. It's like <laughs> dual. I'm seeing his headlights right on me, and I'm doing like 42, 43 miles an hour. So the guy who was going 16, 17 miles an hour I was gonna show is, you. Now, is now on me. Yeah. And I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, is, oh, you want to go? Yeah. You want to go? And I'm thinking the same thing when I'm behind him. Yes. But... In a little, with a different inflection, which is, <laughs> I want to go. Not, you want to go? No, I'd like to go. Yes, I would. Yes, I would like to go to work. That's where I, I don't want to go. I want to go. You understand? And, and listen, everybody, nothing personal. It's it's just, it's like nothing personal if you're walking down the sidewalk and you do a little window shopping. Yeah. And, you know, you're. let's say you just, you're in Manhattan. You're out front of FAO Schwartz. You're look. You're just strolling around. You're looking at window. But there's a guy behind. He's going to work. He's running late. He's got a. He's got a meeting. He's just gonna go. He's gonna hustle past you, right? So this guy stayed in your ass the whole time. No, he he uh, he rode my ass for a while, and then when we came to the stop sign, he he came right up on me, and then whipped around and blew through the stop sign and blew right in front of me again. <sighs> yeah. Hey, you want to go? Yeah, I want to go. Oh I just thought, uh, is there a point that you're proving when you drive 11 miles an hour and someone goes around you? And I, I'm not honking horns or swerving or anything. I do it. I'm I'm uh, I'm a uh, a church mouse. That's I just what I understand. I just if somebody right else around. does something that gets them ahead without slowing you down or even breaking your stride in any way. What do you care? I, I what don't, do you care? What I do you care? I don't know. Is it? Did I shame you into letting <laughs> you know you were driving sub 20 mile an hour speeds? That's crazy. I'm just going to work, buddy. And listen, if you were going a, an acceptable speed, I'd be behind you all the way cheering you on. All right. It's good times. All right, Drew, what do we want to talk about? Oh, we want to talk about what we had a we had a uh, a great conversation, an enlightening conversation uh, last night. It started with Chris, actually. It started with uh, engineer Chris. As you know, I try not to speak to the staff. <laughs> and listen, let me just explain what goes on around here. Everybody around here thinks I'm an asshole. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah. Now, I don't, 
I don't want everyone around here to think I'm an asshole. But it's okay that they do. But it's completely yeah, okay. Right, right. Because, and the reason I think I'm an asshole is because I say to people stuff like, hey, go do that, or go do your job, or go get my coffee, or how come we have to talk again about this? Right? right. That, that's what I say. Right. And maybe that makes me an asshole, maybe it doesn't. I don't care. It doesn't bother me at all one way or the other. <laughs> I'm, 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 I, again, if it just comes down to a coin toss, I would like everyone wait, to wait, like get, me. Get to the conversation, because I can't, it's so funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, uh... So it's fine. And, and I come also, I, I spend too much time during the day at, uh, in the world of TV where there's a hierarchy and Ser there's bosses. A serious hierarchy, a serious one. Right. Very, very serious. I mean, it's a militarist Yeah, if this was TV, phone screener, Tara, don't call me Tara, goddamn, would have been fired years ago. Like uh, two, to, two years before she started, she would have been gone. You're so lucky and, she's not here right now because she'd be so uh, pissed. I don't care. She, Lauren would be gone. Anne would be gone. Everyone would be gone. I Anderson. might be gone. <laughs> That's okay, yeah. Everyone would be fired except right. for Chris over here. Anderson would he, be there. He'd be on probation. Anderson would be okay. A Anderson would probably be around. Yeah. Probably be around. Okay. All right, okay. so. But everyone else would be fired. So. Fine. It's not TV. It's radio. Mm -hmm. I understand that. So, uh, anyway, I don't know. It was the end of the show uh, last night, and I was asking uh, new engineer Chris over here at uh, K-Rock, what, uh, what do you want to get into? You want to be on the airs. You want to be behind the scenes. You want to you want to work the board the rest of his life. And he said, "No, I want to get I want to get behind the mic. I want to get on the air." Right, Chris? Yes, he's nodding his head. Where did he learn that from? You, the head nod. Yeah, of course, he's watching the, carefully. The you Dr. See? Drew yeah. School of Radio. <laughs> nod the head. So I said, "Well, all right. So you want to get on the air?" So I said, "Well, Chris, what have you learned from uh, watching uh, Drew and I work over the last <laughs> couple months over here?" Have you picked up any tips? Have you learned anything? And he said... <laughs> Thoughtfully, by the way. Yeah. Yes, thought for a second. He, he said, uh, well, <coughs> I learned it's, uh, it's not good to prepare. Right. And you can say anything. You can say anything. That's it. And he, no, he said you shouldn't look on the internet before the <laughs> show. <laughs> That's right. Which you could do. I just, you've never seen me do it. That doesn't mean you couldn't do it. But <laughs> So Chris has picked up really zero preparation. <laughs> and And... and, and be yourself. We finally decided. Be yourself. Be yourself. I had to kind of feed him that one, but, that, but, but, but he did yeah. pick up on that yeah, one, and I think I think that's a valuable lesson he learned. And then uh, anyway, just for kicks, I asked uh, Junior, 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 Producer Lauren, what she's picked up from working, what she's gleaned from working with the likes of Drew and myself. You know, big, yeah, the show has won uh, Syndicated Show of the Year on more than one occasion. She must have picked up something. So uh, it's been a couple of years. So I, I said, what, what have you learned from working with us? And uh, Lauren said, well, let's see, what she start with? She started with... Um, you, you leave immediately. Yeah. You, 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 don't, you don't have to work too hard. Right. No oh, yeah, no... No preparation. Z zero preparation. You order people around. You get to boss people around. <laughs> You get you get big bucks. It's all who you know. It's who you yeah. It's it's uh, yeah. It is. Yeah, it's who you, know. who you know and who you're who you're connected who you're to. Connected to. Um, and uh, random of life events. Luck. Yeah, it's luck. It's who you know. Um, oh, you get to talk about whatever you want to talk <laughs> about for as long as you want to talk about it. No one really cares. You get big bucks. You boss people no around. No training. No preparation. And oh oh, yeah. you don't have to be too educated. Yeah, right. No education. I think she started with. Uh, Low, and you low make lots education. Of money. Lots of money. All right, so beats, tons of uh, money, no education or little, little no education. education. No education. You get to boss people around. Uh, you don't have to prepare. You leave immediately. You leave immediately. You and do it. You do whatever you do doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter. That's right. And if you if you did get lucky enough to get in the position where you were actually behind the mic, it would just be a complete. Random, random event, and then once you're there, cosmic coin toss. But, but then once you're there, it doesn't matter what you say. Remember that, Has right? No... <laughs> it's luck and who you know as far as where you, how you got there, and then once you're there, you're just there you're until just something there. happens. It just, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, let's say the same right. Chris said. It doesn't matter what you say. Yeah, but yeah. right. All right, all right. I say, keep your eyes open. You learn something. You see. All right. Very valuable life lessons that you should take with you wherever you go, Lauren. Wherever you go. By the way, always she... remember. No matter where anybody is, it's always luck, and it's always who they know. But it's always Everybody. It's especially a good policy to sort of point that out to your bosses. 
Right. Yeah, that's extra good. <laughs> <laughs> it's always luck, and it's always who you know. Like, for instance, anyone who knows me knows my dad runs radio. Of course. He's well. You know, you made the the good fortune of meeting Jimmy. I met Jimmy. That's Jimmy. right. Right. He was in charge over here when I met him. Doctor Drew's a born son of the physician. Anderson, you were going to ring in with some ideas too. I heard you. No, I just wanted to tell you that uh, Lauren's a little drunk right now too. That's kind of. Funny. Oh, is that? Oh, she's over there no. smiling and giving thumbs up to all these <laughs> these these uh, quasi well, let, totally insulting but listen, comments you made. You got to be able to drink in order to mask the pain of the sort of <laughs> random universe we have where for some reason some people hold a position of power and get the big bucks and for other completely random reasons other people don't i mean you yeah. got to drink you, you how got, else would you deal with it i don't know it's all yeah. random yeah all right now you had a family that supported you and and uh oh. gave you breaks well, every step of the way oh, well, my, your my dad owns westwood one you know him <laughs> you know my dad it's a big wheel he made a few phone calls, pulled a few strings. I mean, I remember as a kid hanging out with Casey Kasem and Rick Dees. Good. It was Good. great. Good. It was huge. I mean, you know me, Drew. Well, I mean, we knew we knew each other for years. Oh, we go to this. Right, quite, we go to this radio shh, parties. Let's see might, at the radio parties. Might, might see the secret here. Yeah. Wait, don't don't hang up on Steve. Secret Put Steve handshake. Hold. Yeah. All, all those backdoor dealings. Sure. So to speak. Sure. It, it, for me, I was set from high school. I mean, I, I was destined to do this. And by the way, no one can ever fire me. <laughs> I can never be fired. Well, because there's no assessment process. It doesn't matter. I what say you what say. I want, do what I want. <laughs> That's right. That's right. When the contracts come up, Drew, it's not based on anything. <laughs> Nothing. Just luck. Random. All right. Well, let's let's hope the lucky streak keeps it rolling, It'd be buddy. Great. All right. I hope so, Danny. I don't know why we bother talking. <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep our fingers crossed. I hope it works out. Oh my goodness. Okay, keep that keep that lucky streak alive, Danny. Yeah, hi. How are now, you? You're 19. Now, we were talking to Danny last night. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> and you were telling us how you had gotten into this adult industry. And exactly. And your family and friends were having a problem with it. Y yes, yes. So go ahead. I Give mean, us a story. Well, I mean, it's just kind of hard because, you know, like one day you're, you know, going along, fine, you know, whatever. And then the next day you're starting to do this stuff and you're like, oh, crap, how do I... How do I bring this up to people? And then the look on their faces after you tell them, it's like, well, you know. If you know they're they're gonna, never... Let's just let's explore a little bit. If you know they're going to react badly to this, why bring it up? Well, because it's like, it, it comes in like the lies of like, oh, why I'm always going, you know, out, you know, down to L.A. and, you know, the places that I need to go filming. And they're like, well, why do you keep going down there? Who's that? Why can't and I By the way, Drew, you? good lucky uh, question, by the way. <laughs> Did I ask that? You asked that. You asked uh, why uh, she brings it up. And first I thought That's that totally was... totally random. I thought it was a good question. And random. then I was like, oh, no, that was luck. That was luck. <laughs> Your luck's going to run out one day, my friend. They'll, they'll strip that doctor, doctor degree right away from you. You're not going to have that anymore. It'll be someone else's turn. Danny? Uh-huh. I'm sorry, baby doll. Oh, I'm so, sorry. All right. So, so who are they? Who are you telling? Your friends? Who is um, it that's yeah. giving you hassles about where you're going? <laughs> well, I also work a regular daytime, like, nine-to-five type of job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard because now, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm calling out a little more. My availability is changing. Everybody, you know, kind of wants to know what's going on. And all right. Now let, hold on. All right. you, just yeah. sound, you sound like you like the idea that they want to know yeah, what's going chaos. on. Yeah. What well, What's your daytime job? I work at a coffee place. Mm-hmm. Do you have a boyfriend? Not anymore. I just got out of a really serious relationship. How many movies have you made total? Um, total, I've done um, four so far. Mm -hmm. And what's the plan? Is there a number you want to stop at? You want to keep going until you're 25? What do you want to do? <laughs> I'm just trying to save up some money right now, you know? I mean, it, and, and by the way, uh, it's not as though you are running out downtown every day or even once a week. You've done it four times. People yeah. would not pick up on you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. This is ridiculous. It's, it's only, you you want to tell people for some reason. Well, no. I mean, it's only it's only been a, a month, and I mean, we've only shot four films, but I mean, I've gone down there like more than four times. You know what I mean? Five like times. for interviews and you know to try to get these things going down and sure, so to speak. So talk about unlucky, by the way, having to do porn when you could be doing radio. 
Well, that's the randomness of life. <laughs> that's what I'm that's saying. That's the wrong business. What and, uh, you could end up in gay porn, Adam. That's where you could be headed. It's I random. could? It's random. Oh, man. I got to knock on wood, <laughs> boy. Thankful. I could be doing gay porn tomorrow. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Danny? Uh-huh. No, 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 no. No, no, because I know people. They could get oh. you out of it or get... Oh, keep you here. That's right. That's how I got in. <laughs> Remember how I got in? You know my dad. Remember him? Uh, Big wheel. And your uncle? Oh, Big yeah. wheel. You see him around the station. All the time. Kicking ass and taking names. Here's here's a, a little uh, reality tidbit. Yeah, you've been, you and I have been in the air 10 years? Yeah, nine years. Right. Yeah. met your dad for the first time at Kimmel Show two weeks ago. He's so busy running radio. And... If you had said, okay, look across this audience of 500 people and tell me who the person that's least likely to be Adam Carolla's father, that's the man I would have picked. He's so busy pulling strings and uh, working backdoor deals for me. You know my, you know my family. Yeah, of course. I can't. They're all over me. Hey, Danny. Uh-huh. We, we think you should probably uh, stop doing these movies before you, you build up too big a resume. Really? Yeah. It's just, it, you know what? Here's the thing. You're 19, and as a girl... You're stupid. As a guy, you're stupid at 19. As a girl, you're practically retarded. Okay? Yeah, this, this is a very persuasive hey. argument. You're Thank you. Have. You're you're not going to be happy about this a few years from now. You're going to want to start a family, have some kids, husband, all that stuff. It's not going to work. Well, I'm actually going to be... Oh, she's out. All right, I'm actually all right. even more concerned. The fact that she is gratified by this and doesn't see anything, is confused why other people would react, and yet is compelled to create that chaos. Yeah. That's a bad series of signs. Mm. And uh, I, you know, she needs a little work with boundaries and regulation, and uh, boy, undoubtedly some trauma in her background. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, mm. you know, whatever people want to no, do to solve luck. their problems, it's not a long-term solution. It's all luck. It's all luck anyway. Steve. Yes. You're 17. Yes, I am. What's up? Well, every time that me and my girlfriend have sex, she's right about to reach an orgasm, orgasm, and right when it happens, she's about to, and it just goes away completely, and she doesn't have the feeling anymore. And I want to know mm -hmm. if it's related to birth control or not, or no. anything like that. Could be. Mm -hmm. Could be. Mm -hmm. It does affect orgasm function, but strangely enough, Steve asked a good question that's bogus. Oh, really? Do you get that feeling? I don't know. I was trying to figure out how old uh, Junior, Junior, Junior producer Lauren was. I was trying to figure out what I was doing when but, I was her But age. it's a good question, Steve. Yes, it could. It, particularly if she, some women on the progestational agents, the ones that have more progesterone, tend to get shut down that way. Some women actually do are more active with the progesterone, but what you're describing is can be from the birth control pill, or it could be just her. You know, so a, a teenager often has these kinds of experience of a woman. Uh, you know, as they sort of come into their own with their orgasmic function, it takes a while. Mm, I also, if you're screwed with a little and you don't want to give it up, it gets weird. Well, there's that thing, too. It's like they can't hand it over at the very last second. It's like uh, they well, put the ad in the paper, but then when the guy comes to pick up the car, and it's like, uh, I can't throw the keys to well, him. Well, the reason I don't believe the question is the, the, the affect wasn't there, but also the, the circumstances weren't specific enough. All right. You know what I'm saying? Steve? Uh, Good question. Is, is she have any problems with her dad, or has she ever got abused? Is there any problems like that? No, not like that. I mean, we've been going out for two also, years, and now I think she's had a single orgasm, but she gets, like, pretty loud, and it See just doesn't happen. And yeah, pretty loud. What what year were you born? 86. Mm -hmm. That's right. Touche. No, I get his age is right. It's just, uh, yeah, just just checking. Just checking. Well, what, are you, what are you going to ask him? What's the inside of a woman feel like? <laughs> No, I'm just, I don't, well, just it's interesting. Kind of sandy, like a cat's tongue. <laughs> ah, busted! Yeah. Well, here, okay, let me add him. You want to add him? Yeah. Lauren, Wait. how old are you? Give me your, give me, show me, show me that. Two, you're, two, three, 23. 23? 23. All right, 23. It's random that she survived that long. Yeah, wow. Do you want to know what I was doing when I was uh, 23? Carpets. No, nah, I, I was done Ditches. cleaning carpets. Ditches. Just, just, uh, Pulling asbestos out of uh, condemned houses. That's but, good times. Uh, well, do I have car insurance? Uh, no. Do you have a car? I had a beat up turn. I had a motorcycle. Well, you got with that job tire because out. of who you knew. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to know anyone to get that job. <laughs> All right. All right. Steve. Steve. Yeah. What are you doing to her when she almost climaxes? Um, well, sometimes I go down on her, and she she's about ready to get to that point, and it just. See, no, no, you've never you never <laughs> gone down on a chick. <laughs> you, you've never been in a See chick. You, you, you've never been there. Steve, good good question, though. i got a hand to you. Yeah, nice try, buddy. You admit it, right? That's I'm not the... lying. I'm serious. We need help on this. She's right no. here, and we uh, need help. 
Put her on the phone. She wants to talk, but she's too afraid. Come here. Come here, man. <laughs> Just say hello. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Is, is what's, does Steve. what St Steve says, is that true? He's not just putting you up to this? Huh? No, not, not at just... all. We just got done. Okay. Okay. You just got done. okay. just got done. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. Did you did you rinse out or just just the same yeah. talking to us with the same tongue you used on her? And what's what's the girl's name? Jennifer. Oh, listen, Jennifer. 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 Is that Look. What? I don't know. We'll talk to just... Jennifer, find out what's going on with her. Okay. All right. Steve. Yeah. Give us Jennifer for a second. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> Jennifer? Yeah. So you, you feel you feel like you're getting close, but you just can't get pushed over the the crest of the hill, right? Yeah. Have you ever had an orgasm by yourself or anything? No. No. And it, it's this is normal seventeen year olds. So yeah. It's not the birth control pill. It's just it, women well, your age often have difficulty having orgasmic function. Okay. He, here's what here's what needs to happen for her and for Steve. She needs to not make a big issue out of it in her own head. Right. I know it's. Uh, easy to tell someone to stop yeah, thinking about something, hard to actually stop thinking about Steve something. Steve needs to make it not a project. That's stop right. Turning into a, into a uh, uh, that's right. Project. Right. He he can't be like a bear with its paw in the honey jar. Yeah. We're just trying to scrape out every last bit, knocking yeah. things over. Because yeah. guys become guys are like a like a raccoon in a yeah. kitchen in a cabin. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Just tearing and knocking and making a mess. Just relax. No pressure. Women don't respond to speed. Or pressure, and when I say pressure, I mean physical pressure yeah. or emotional yep, pressure. Right. You got to be like, "Hey, baby, if cat, it happens, Persian it cat. happens." Just, Persian just, cat. Yeah, just rub on them a little bit. Hey, think Persian cat. Lucky analogy. Lucky right? analogy. But you got came to that one because of who you knew. Let's take a break. All right, we'll uh, be right back after this. <laughs> I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Drew going to Missouri. Missouri tomorrow. And then uh, are we doing the show tomorrow? Yeah. I'll be calling you from Kansas City. <sighs> Sarah, Sarah Rue is going to be in here on uh, Sunday night, by the way, from uh, Less Than Perfect. And then uh, Bob Kinney, the uh, Bachelor. Saw a little bit of that tonight. Well, was thinking about that. You know, Bob Kinney... Is that a decent... You know, Bob Guinea, he's one of these guys where he was like the chubby bachelor guy before, right. and then he lost the weight. So he went from sort of chubby to husky. Uh, you know, he's not, I wouldn't, wouldn't call him thin. Uh, but here's the point. He's got 25 chicks, and they're all going nuts for him. They're all going nuts, and they're hot. It's like a bunch of hot 24-year-old school teachers. School teacher is a hot job for a chick, but it's they never teach high school. They just teach kindergarten and stuff like that. It's not like I think they say school teacher, but they really just sort of eh, they, they, you know keep the kids in line a little. They they shuffle them around a little bit. I, that's a hard job. Third grade, fourth. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you something. Yeah. So anyway, here's the point: twenty five super hot chicks, and the beauty of this is if you're the guy, once the competition's on, the competition's on. It doesn't matter if Ooh, the yeah. competition... It's about the other girls. It's not about the guy. Competition could be for a playing card yeah. smeared with fecal matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Game on, game yeah. on. Yes. Now, that is, guys, that is the female. guys, more competitive than women in many ways. More aggressive, yeah. But we're going to take a look at the prize. Yeah. And if you took... If, imagine the female equivalent to this. There's, Let's just say there was... Uh, and they did the show. They did the, the Bachelorette. Where they had uh, they had they had the female. Now imagine if the Bachelorette was uh, eh, well, drop drop forty pounds, no longer fat, just a little bit husky, uh, not bad, but nothing 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 too special. You get twenty five hot model type guys to uh, get into a fist fight over. No, <laughs> no, it'd be drawing straws to see who banged her. And I don't mean good straws. I mean yeah. bad straws. So guys, so guys, the competition is not about the other guys. For girls, for women, it's about the other women. It's not about the where you're going. It's it's, you, if you have it's just 20, out competing. If you have 25 hot-looking guys, and there's one bachelor chick or bachelorette chick, and she's a good solid four or five, those guys are going, hey, buddy, well, because, bang away. Because what they're going to have to do is they're going to want to kill each other to get at what it is they want. Right. That's what's got to be there, or they're not going to go after But if they don't want it. Then they'll go play basketball together. Right. The, you know what I mean? Right. They'll stay the together. Women, the, the women, 25 hot chicks all in love with this guy and all going hard after him. There's nothing wrong with him. I just mean he's not a model. 
You know, speaking of these sort of uh, platitudes we have in our culture, I re recounted for some friends of mine your story about rape <laughs> yesterday, hmm? about raping oh, right. the violent crime with one caveat. You come. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a sexual crime. It's a violent crime. That's right. <laughs> Give us, give me two more examples. Oh, true. Come on, it's so it's... funny. <laughs> Please, I, I've never, I've enjoyed that so much. Okay, all right. But I was saying, I always get a kick out of the fact that people uh, always call rape a crime of violence. It's not a sexual crime. It's a violent crime where you come at the end, and it just uh, <laughs> it's like any other violent, like crime. any other violent where crime. Where you come at the end? It's the yeah, it, it's 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 assault. It happens yeah. at the workplace, right? When somebody comes, disgruntled in, employee comes marches in into the post office, comes into the comes into the post office. It's got a it's got a loaded uh, Mac ten, unloads the banana clip, empties it all, and, and then, then comes. <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's it's the same. Was it's it right, it's right no there. different than if we had a few pops at a bar. I uh, saw a guy at the end give me the stink eye. He picked up a pool cue, one up, broke it over my back. I threw like a, uh, took a beer mug and smashed it over his head, and then came. <laughs> it's the same. Same Drew. crime. Same, same crime. crime. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know why Drew loves that so much. It's so ridiculous. That's why. <laughs> but it's not a, it's not a sexual thing. But, uh, but you do come. <laughs> I wonder if we could try to use that, you know? What? Hey, honey, uh. Uh, yeah, you're banging. Uh, you're banging. What's oh. sexual? No, no, that was not a sexual thing that was going on there. I was banging your sister, but it was not a sexual encounter. <laughs> you're beating off in front of the in front of the computer. Uh, uh. No, no, that was a lot of things, but that was not sexual. We're using your rape logic. Oh my goodness, Rachel. Hi. You're uh, 21. Yes, I am. What's uh, up? Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. My question is, um, would it be appropriate oh, me. for me to have a conversation with my father in regards to the fact that he um, cheated on my mother for the majority of no, That's not of a him. sexual, that's not a yeah, sexual it's, it's, thing. Uh, probably shouldn't no, use the word like cheated even because that implies that it's sexual. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what do you know? Um, well, I found out when I was nine, I overheard a phone conversation and, uh, my mom, over the years, has told me details, and uh, I've seen some proof. And hey, hang on a second. Your mom knows he's cheating. Oh yes, she knew. And so, who, so you want to confront your dad? Yeah, she made me promise when I found out that I would never say anything to him, and so I haven't for years. I ago. think you should talk to your dad for your own sake. Yeah, I mean, because it's bothering you. It's bothering you. It's going to affect how you think about men. And did, did he stop? Um, no, he uh, continued to until they got divorced. I mean, mom and dad got divorced. they got divorced. How old were you when they got divorced? Uh, I was 18. It sounds like they... How long of... do you think this went on? Nine years. About nine or ten. Nine years? Oh, oh yeah, you discovered... You but heard the phone what... call at nine... Yeah. Nine years of cheating? Here's what this is. Not a sexual... No, 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 no. Go ahead. Here's what this is. This is the marriage is not working. We're going to keep it together till the kids are 18. Turn 18. And then we're out of here. Yeah. And they, they may have had an agreement, Rachel. Well, um, they were going to get divorced... Uh, when I was about 10, and uh, the woman he was with didn't want to marry him, and so he just stuck around, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, uh, okay, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Rachel. Okay. Uh, your dad's uh, no angel, no. but he, he, did, he stuck around. He provided for the family, right? right? Yes. What, what What did he do for a living? Um, he uh, fixes bowling machines. <laughs> I knew it. Of course. I, I was going to say. <laughs> but he, who does he know? How to get that job? Um, he used to work for AMF and not right. work See? for yeah. a See, he knew somebody in the AMF company. Yeah, that's right. AMF well, I lucked into it. Yeah. You know, it was a very strange... Um, hold on a second, Drew. We don't have a guest tonight. We can talk about or whatever we're going to talk about. But it's very, just strange. That's not going to mean anything to anybody. But when we were talking about the, the rape jag a little bit earlier... And uh, no, right, right before that, we're talking about the Bachelor, and I said you need to have a prize. Yeah, you need to have a prize if a guy's going to compete. Right. And I said you could take a playing card and smear some fecal matter on right. it. And women would fight over right. it uh, if it was a comp. Right. If there are other it's, women it's, competing, it's, right. it's compete for men. It's compete right. for, not compete with. Okay. The first thing that I thought was you could take a bowling pin oh. and smear fecal matter oh, on nice. it. But I thought, nah, eh, I don't like that as much as playing card. Sounds even like less value. Pin, how, when would there ever be a reference to bowling on our show? It, 
it never just, happened. All I'm saying is, is a minute and a half ago, I thought bowling pin, and I didn't say it. Well, and uh, now, now again, not not eerie or bizarre, but uh, well, it uh, speaks to the randomness of life, doesn't it? The randomness that Lauren was telling us about. That's right. Yeah. God, she pointed that out, Rachel. Okay, I, uh, my concern is that it's affecting how you think about men. And you may not even realize, realize it at this point, but it's, it's imprinted itself on you. And either you have t two choices from my standpoint. Okay. Well, three. One, you can get over it, okay. which you may not be able to do. Secondly, you can uh, try to have a more re real reality-based relationship with your dad. Try to talk to him about what his motivation was, who he is. Try to see him as a real person, not as dad. And maybe you can resolve some. And if you can't, that's the time for therapy. And, and and listen, number two or three or four or five, you know, the guy stuck around until you're 18. He well, provided for the family. I'm not saying he was a great guy, but we certainly heard worse on this show. That's why I'm referring her back to dad. And, and, because and because yeah, maybe, dad may be able to reconcile this. He may okay. be able to and give I, a chance. And I, I think, Rachel, you got to let this go just a little yeah, bit. Give him a chance. He's not. He's probably not a bad guy. You, the All circumstances right. may be uh, some things you have no idea. All right. What's, what do you want to say? The only um, variables in the situation are he's lived in another country for about um, five years, and we don't really talk very often. And Now I did, he's, he, he has lived in another country? Yeah, I did promise my mom that I wouldn't say anything, and I'm afraid if I do say something, she's going to be devastated. Well, look, put no. it this way. If you say anything, you're not going to feel any better. You've, you've convinced yourself into thinking you will, but you never do. Well, you're not going to feel vindicated or something. No. It's not going to discharge the bad just, feeling. Just, uh, you're 21. So, I don't know. Let's uh, just move listen, on. Listen, you need, it sounds to me like you need some sort of relationship with your dad. He's gone for five years, a divorce. You need a relationship with him. If you can't get it, then... Oh. Uh, you know, I, this is really, it's the only decent thing my parents ever did, beside my dad being the head of radio and getting me <laughs> this gig, is... Uh, I knew my parents were complete losers by the time I was 9 or 10. They got divorced when I was 8. I knew they were idiots, and I just thought, it's, just go do whatever you want. I'd get a girlfriend, get a boyfriend, get a girlfriend and a boyfriend, sit at home and smoke pot. Just do whatever you want. I'm not responsible for you. I'm, I'm going to go about my life. life. And, uh, go pee on my friends. It, it, yeah. I got, I, got, I got buddies to urinate on. Yeah. I, got, I got work to do. But it's, it's, it's liberating. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, been that, it, it way, is. Been that it, way for 30 years. It, it is in a way, but it's uh, minimizing what you actually needed from them that you couldn't get. So Yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it for I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I mean, but that's where the 15 years of therapy has come in. It's to make up for what was missed there. Yeah, I just don't feel responsible for No, that's a good thing. Do. That's a healthy thing. Yeah, it's a little too healthy because I don't feel responsible for anything. Andrew? Hey. Hey, you're 17. What's up? What's up? Um, I had a question for Dr. Drew about his book. Yeah, cracked. What's going on? Yeah, I just picked it up two days ago, and I'm about to the fourth chapter. Okay. I was just asking, is this all based on true experiences? They, not just true experiences, but kind of typical experiences. It's sort of day like in, day out. Day for Wait a minute. Not yeah. true experiences? Well, it's not. It's based on true experiences, but there's no single person that could look at this book and say, hey, that was me. Mm -hmm. But it's typical. I, I, I sort of... Uh, wrote about cases that I felt were exemplary and typical of my day. Nice. It is nice. Awesome good book. times, huh? It's a good time, yeah, huh? Yeah, awesome book as far as I can tell. You're well, enjoying it? Oh, very much. Good. Oh, you're 17. Look at you. You got the world by the tail. Yeah, <laughs> really. Well, hopefully this will teach you something, too. You know, we always talk about people who have been victimized and setting boundaries. This is really what that feels like, to go and dig in with people who've had some difficulties and be empathically available for them. But remember... You could be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or work at a manure farm. It's all it's random. All, it's all the cosmic well, wheel in the sky. Right now, so. now <laughs> just sit at home and wait. <laughs> yeah. Wait for something to happen. Uh, but the it, world is your oyster. <laughs> I mean, because that's all the world is. Once you get in, they can't get you out, though. It doesn't matter. Right. All right, Andrew, good luck with that. Thanks book. for the bus. Yeah. Uh, we did. I did an NPR interview tonight, and uh, man, it, it drove uh, book sales. Went all the way up to like number 20 or something at, on Amazon. Well, here's the thing. People listen to national public radio. By, by books. Well, they read. Yeah. They know how to read. The people who listen to this show don't read. So you get the, the wrong Well, I still the wrong audience. I still wanted some support from our listeners. I, 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 want did, them to read I did that book. NPR, and I got pissed off at how nice their studios were. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Did you go there? Oh, I've been to several of them. They're nice. Did you go to the, you go to the big one out here in like Santa Monica, Culver City no, area? No, it's in Pasadena. It's also very nice. Oh, hold on a second. Don't point the same direction I'm pointing. 
I have no idea what direction Pasadena is. So okay, obviously, but it's not the same direction. I didn't. I'm I don't know if you're actually pointing to Santa Monica or not. You see, it, uh, it, fine. You got to point. If I'm pointing toward the beach and you're and you're pointing toward the valley, you can't point the same way I'm pointing. I think you're pointing towards Culver City, towards uh, uh, Century am. City. I'm no. I'm pointing. We're going toward... outside. You're pointing. Okay. Towards... No, all right. All right. Century I'm not going to move my right, arm. Century City's right here. No, the Century City's back this way. I'm pointing towards Santa Culver Monica's City. this way. Santa Monica is that way. Pasadena is that way. Yes, Pasadena's thank you. Pasadena is that way. Yes, that's what I would say. Holy, even Christ. more like that. Way. All right, hold on. This is great radio. <laughs> All right, listen. We got to get Chris, the bottom. Chris can say anything. It doesn't matter. Once in a while, too, you find guys cheating. They start moving their arm. You go like, "All right, you got to keep keep your arm pointing the direction." Okay, you said Hawthorne was that. Keep your arm. And as you're walking down the hall, you see their arms starting to shift. <laughs> Put it back. Okay, let's. All right, I'm spun around, but let's go figure it out. We'll take a quick break. We'll go outside. We'll be back. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Well, Dr. Drew was right. I was 180 degrees off. I kept. I did that thing where I pointed toward the direction I thought Santa Monica was, and then I walked with my arm out all the way. It's always it's, it's great that we're both Santa adult Monica. males. But uh, the thing that's funny, too, is uh, the arm will go down. You'll take a couple of steps, and the other person will try to recreate the arm position and go, you're pointing over there, and now you're standing in the hall, and you're going, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Move your arm about four inches to the left because that's the direction I was pointing. We did that you're half, dozen, half a dozen times, too. Yeah, we, we had to go all the way into the parking lot. We wasn't good enough. <laughs> what, what, we had to walk backwards, out about fifteen doors, and into the parking lot because I had to keep my hand stuck out like I like I like uh, someone was painting us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hey, good times. Good times. We can keep ourselves amused over here. Shy. Hi. Is it Shay? Shy. It's, Shay. It's, it's Shy. All right, Shy. You're a twenty. What's up? Um. Well, I'm I'm married. My husband's 21, and he likes to have sex, but I like never want it. And is I was that, wondering, is is there anything I could do about? Are you on any, med- you on any medication? I uh, no. Is there some reason that you don't like sex? Something happened to I'm you? I'm just I'm I'm never in the mood. Never. Is, how's the relationship going? Um, it's a typical relationship, typical marriage. Um. Yeah, that's always bad. That that's always bad. Yeah, kids? Uh, no, he has a daughter, but I don't. We don't have kids together. Anything else going on medically with you? Any medication or anything? Nothing. Um, Birth control pills? Uh, I did that for a while, but I stopped because the pills weren't. They they make, kind of make me sick. All right, and that's have you ever gone through periods where you enjoyed or wanted to have sex? Yeah, but that was like when I was. In school, but then I, you know, after I got out of school, I didn't have sex for about three years. All right, so this and is then, some sort of bipolarity well, thing. Why'd so, you get married to this guy so early? Um, because I love him. Oh boy, right. you don't you don't sound that convinced about that anymore. Well, or do you th- do you still love him? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be here if I trust me. I'm kind of girl. If I wouldn't. I didn't want to be here. I would be gone, basically. Yeah, well, that's what concerns us, is the kind of guy you would want to be with is probably the kind of guy that's a perpetrator, just like whatever happened to you that caused this cycling in your sexuality. When people go through periods of hypersexuality and then deprivation, that usually suggests some trauma, either physical trauma, probably physical abuse. Any trauma, Shy? Not that I know of. No one ever hit you? Um, no, um, I had a normal... Childhood, as far as I know, I mean. Okay. I understand. Everyone thinks that normal childhood. Well, were, were you ever hit? Was somebody ever strike you um, or anything? No, not not by my parents or anybody or. No. no I, so the answer is no. So listen. Well, something missing here. Go fine. Go. Uh, why don't you go to the doctor and get a work up then? See what's no, up. No, no, I don't think it's medical because she it's a hyper and then hyper. Are, 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 are you not attracted to this guy because he's a nice guy, or because he's a bad guy? Am I not, or am I? Oh, phone cut out again. Yeah. Now, I um, Anderson, I it's unclear whether people at home can tell she cut out or not. No. She just cut out. It did cut out. Okay. I didn't hear a thing she said. Hello? Okay. She is shy. Shy. Yeah? Uh, 
are you okay? I guess I gotta ask again because yes. we had a little phone difficulty. Um, are you are you attracted to this guy? Yes, very much. Yes, very much. Yes, yeah, I'm not sure. And by the way, she's given us a few good answers, which is you know how's the marriage? Well, it's like any right. like any marriage. Then number two, which is uh, child well, like you, any child. Have you ever thought about leaving? Uh, listen, if I was going to leave, I would have left. Yeah. Again, it's it's that it's hedged yes. a little bit. It's not it's not a direct answer. Then, then I said, you know, are you attracted? He goes, very much. You're very much attracted to the guy, a guy you can't stand. I mean, it, no, it's I, a guy oh, that you can't be intimate with. I, I'm just saying, can you say you're very much attracted to somebody and and loathe having sex with them? Can you be when, that way? Yes, when you're a trauma survivor. Shy? Uh, yeah, it's not, how, it's not just how, him. It's like, a, it's like probably with any guy. Uh, I'm, I'm, I never think about it. I never want to do it. I never so have to see, she's, she's shut down. You're completely shut down. And uh, no, have we ever sexually abused? Um, No. Why is it's a hesitation every time? I, 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 because I think she's angry, and angry people try to screw with you all the time with every syllable. <laughs> Are you angry, shy? No. <laughs> okay, then why why do you got to do that? Like you know, we ever physically abused or sexually abused? Why is it always a weird pause and a and a and a little noise before the no? It's, is like, it's it? like you ever physically abused? Um, not no. exact, not by my well, parents I mean, or anybody like that. When what? I was younger, uh, like I was like any other kid, I would assume you know I was never satisfied, you know. Parents, they never did anything bad to me, but still, I was basically a depressed kid, and you know, but I got over that. What okay. are you talking uh, about? Who cares? Look, maybe she's just depressed. No, she is telling us something, but can't come out and say it. Really? I was like any kid. It's like any marriage. I was like any child. No, she wasn't. What happened? Was she was somebody violent in the home? I'm I'm tired of this. Okay, listen, I'm gonna punch her up, but I gotta take a leak. We'll go. I'll try to get, squeeze it out of her. Right. Shy. Yes. Oh, what? We better have something good by the time I get done. All right, all right. We have a chance to get a pee this way. Come on. Yeah. We should be happy about this. What did, went on in your home? What was what was so painful? Mm. Your, well, I got pee. Was your dad away all the time? Was there violence in the home? Was there somebody? I mean, what happened? I had a stepdad and a mom. Um, I never. Well, I am the youngest, and I always was, you know, treated, you know, differently because I was the youngest. How were you treated? You cannot talk in riddles. You got to tell us specifically what happened. What happened to your biological father? Uh, he was never there. Um, How old were I you know, when he left? Uh, was probably well. He wasn't there at birth, but he came in and out of my life periodically. You know, what kind of guy was he? Uh, he's a jerk. <laughs> uh, was he an alcoholic or addict or something? No, he just tends to make promises he can't keep. Okay, and then what was it your stepfather did? What was he like? Um, you said they treated you differently. How did they treat you? Well, they never let me do anything because I was the youngest. And, and how did what? How did that manifest? How did they do that? It was like I had to stay home. You know, I couldn't have any friends over. Were they verbally abusive to you? Sometimes. And but never physically abusive. No. No one ever hit you. No. Why am I convinced that that happened to you? That someone hit me. Yeah. Uh, the only things that I've gotten were spankings, but that's because That's that. what I'm talking about, Chai. Okay, so here's what we got. Yeah. Biological father left at birth, came in and out of her life, made promises, and was an a-hole, abusive a-hole. Stepfather, abusive a-hole that, that was over-controlling, and kept her in, in her in her room, wouldn't allow her any socialization, and struck her. So me, it, was, it was a trifecta. It was everything we thought we were seeing here. I ate like uh, 1,400 oh pine nuts tonight, God. and my whiz smelled like a barn. Crazy smell. Did you say whiz. it? Can I go see it? Eh, if, you, if you get down low enough into the sink, you probably catch <laughs> the remnants of it. No, no, I didn't do it. This is sink. why I'm so insensitive. I'm just People saying, like corn, corn nut, I mean, uh, pine nuts could be my new asparagus. Right, well, good times. Okay. But Shy had everything my senses ah, told me was there. She was physically yeah. abused. She All had an right. abandoning biological father and an a-hole stuff. Of course. All right. So why can't people be honest about this stuff? And it's stuff that needs to be treated, and it will not change. And that's why she's shut down. She's cycling through hyper and hyposexuality from the trauma of the past. If you want to deal with that, deal with it. But don't be surprised by what's happening. Just, just don't have any kids. She's not going to do anything. 
She's not going to do anything. Time for a break. She's not going to change. Well, she can't even admit that this is what's been going uh, on. Even she, we're explicitly okay. saying that's She's what 15 happened. years away from doing anything. I just say, Shy, don't have any kids, <sighs> and get yourself some TiVo and call the life. That's fine. Yeah, put that on a second break. All right. Uh, listen, everybody. Not everybody's got to change. Yeah, but how about just us all ex- accepting what reality no, is? How just, about that? How about just getting a TiVo and not having so many goddamn kids? I'd be uh, happy right, with I that. I go with that, too. All right, don't, don't shoot anyone in the workplace. All right. Hey, look, okay. don't shoot anyone in the workplace. Stay home, watch a lot of TiVo. Stop banging out all the kids. All right. That's that's enough. You don't have to be self-actualized. Not everyone needs to write a book. You know what I'm saying, Drew? Cracked. Thank you. Thank you. Buy it, please. Amazon, read number it. 29. Read it. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, love line. I'm Adam, the Hashtag to Drew. Phone number 1 800. Sound like Norm McDonald there. 1 800 L O V E 191. Where's he been? Norm? Yeah. Norm goes away uh, for about 18 months <laughs> and then resurfaces on. in a sitcom that doesn't suit him very well. And then uh, that lasts a few months and then he goes away for another year and a half and then comes back and does another sitcom. Interesting. I don't know why, like, um,. Like, I know Norm. I'm not best friends with him. I just hung out with him a little bit we here and there. We played baseball with him, remember? Oh, yeah. Norm's an alcoholic, gambling addicted, <laughs> uh, horrible, horrible man. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't not experience him that way. He seemed okay he, he's, he's, he's talented. He's funny. He's a, a decent enough guy. And by but, the way, gambling and alcoholism does not make somebody horrible, horrible. No, but I, I just mean he, 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 I, he's not sitcom material. I'm not sitcom he's material. He's not John Ritter. Yeah, he's no. not. He's got more to say than that. Yeah. Right. And uh, he should say it. And I don't want to do a sitcom for the same reason Norm shouldn't want to do a sitcom, but he pops up in a sitcom got once it. a year, and then it. it doesn't last that long because okay. it's not It's not for him, even though he's real yeah. talented. <sighs> he's, he's a good guy, but... There's only so many options on television these days. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, look, at Jim Belushi. Sitcom. That's sitcom. That's sitcom. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. When I once saw hey when I once saw Norm Macdonald uh, do stand up, mm-hmm. there were disclaimers saying you know a lot of people don't find his humor funny and you might leave and we're not giving your money back and about twenty people left. Wow! <laughs> Did he say insulting things? No, just like his his humor is really offbeat and people think it's gonna be like Saturday Night Live humor and it's not. Yeah, but also sometimes he's like drunk and hungover and you know what I mean. Yeah, like you're not getting you're not getting him, you know you're not getting his A game. Yeah. But did you like it, Anderson? Oh, I loved it. The wait staff was laughing. I was laughing, but a lot of people were not laughing. But uh, you, you can agree with me when I say not really the best guy for a sitcom. I, I, I have no idea how that happened. It's like George Carlin doing a sitcom, but that failed. But right. Norm's well, that's working. the point. That's the point. Yeah, you should stay with Thomas the Tank Engine. That's right. Where, where, where he's known and loved. Yeah. That's how he got his start. All right. Random. Random. It's all luck. You went from Thomas to stand-up. Just, you see how that works? All luck. Or back and forth. All luck. Don't bother trying anyone. True man rated a Thomas the Tank Engine once. <laughs> Dave, you're 20. Hey. What's up? Um, I have a question about uh, uh, when me and my girlfriend, we when we were, like, having sex, mm-hmm. there's, like, a, a big difference between when I finish and when she does. And I You mean, <laughs> what does that mean exactly? What's you mean in time yeah. or in, in what what transpires in, in, in time? In time, I see. In time, so um, you finish when she finishes first, and then how long into it does she finish? Like between five and ten minutes. All right, mm-hmm. and you and me, it's like a uh, twenty thirty. Twenty thirty. Uh-huh. So she's got to kind of hang in there. For, yeah. Does uh, she get frustrated and sort of unhappy with your continued? No, I, I don't know. It just feels weird because... Because she's done. Yeah, she's done. She's really done, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. And, uh, do you, okay, do you think you could speed up a little bit? Yeah, I was wondering, like, what would be... How often do you guys have sex? Uh, at least once a week. Once a week, yeah. Mm. Can't really do much with that. Um, how's your plumbing going? I mean, are you... Are you Cleaning uh, it? Clearing uh, the pipes? Yeah, you taking care of yourself? Yeah. How often? How often? Uh, all the time. <laughs> Are you doing it now? No. 
But you just finished, right? Crime. No, no, Fire not by crime. myself. It's always with her. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, uh, do you beat off? Uh, I used to. But you don't anymore because you got her. Yeah. But yeah. you only have her once a week. Maybe more. It it all depends on how often we get to see each other. I see. Still but, not an answer. Still, you never beat off. No, not not much anymore. Like no. every now and then, if I haven't seen her for like a, a long time, maybe. What's a long time? Like a couple of weeks. And if you didn't beat off and you let the tough couple weeks build up, would you come quicker? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I know, Drew, you always play this card, but look. Some he, guys, it works, sometimes it doesn't. He says, yeah. I think it works the opposite way, no, which is I, I think he needs to get into a rhythm yeah. and a paced up rhythm. It's yeah. like, here's what it's like. You no, know, I get it. It's like saying, look, if you only run once a month, yeah. you can run really far because you've saved up all that running. Uh-uh. You don't run so good. You but, run better if you run every day. But if you'd like to take a giant whiz, you got to save it up. And it's easier to, oh, that's you know disgusting. what I'm saying? You're peeing on her? You know what I'm saying? It, it's, there's a save-up component to, to uh, orgasm in the mail. There is, but not at 20. There can be. There can be. Mm. And it's not necessarily. But I agree not with you. really. He should try. I, he'd be better off just getting it going on a daily basis and working on his speed. I, I agree with you on that. I actually Thank you. think he's probably masturbating more than he's telling us, but he's sort of ashamed to admit it. Dave? Yeah. Are you lying to us about the amount you beat off? No. Okay. Well, listen. Why do I... Uh, do me a favor. Do it every day. Okay. And then uh, try an experiment. When are you going to see her next? Uh, probably Saturday. Saturday. That's, uh, what, about three, four days, three days? Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to do it uh, tonight, tomorrow, Friday. And, and focus. And then focus on Saturday. But then each night he's got to focus, too. You get that. Yeah, see if you can speed it up. And if you can, if it takes things longer because of this, then you wait the couple of weeks and see if you can get a build-up at thing. Right. Because some guys are trigger more easily if they've been deprived for a while. Right. All right. Uh-oh. Uh oh, wait a minute. Tom? Yes, sir. You're 22? Yep. You can play the Taboo 2 theme song on your guitar? Yeah, I figured it out for you. Wow. Oh, well, it is a guitar-driven song. Yeah. It's, a, it's acoustic. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's a, yeah. It is now. <laughs> Taboo 2, my favorite oh. porn movie. Uh, the guy, for those of you who haven't talked about it in a while, uh, the guy, Junior, is having sex with his mom and his sister. Oh. Uh-huh. And uh, and his girlfriend, mm -hmm. and uh, someone went and wrote a song about uh, Junior. Well, it's in the song. Well, it's, it's in the it's, movie it's, Taboo it, too. The song is all these women's perspective on this guy. He right? has it all. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, you know, a guy, ballad. guy who's raping his sister ballad, and his mom. The, the ballad of Taboo too. Right. right. The, ballad the ballad of Junior. Of junior yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you do you, can you, you have acoustic guitar there? Yep. Oh, it sounded <laughs> like Tavo. It's been a Pavlovian reaction. I got a little boner there. <laughs> All right, so Anderson, why don't you play the Tavo? No, 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 shut up. Shush. Uh, play it softly. Now, let me see. just uh, kick it in here, Tom. See what Sal's okay. doing here. You put the phone down. Or... I can't hear it. Play it again. What do you say? Play it. I can't hear it. All right, then start. Just play it. No, no. Okay. You, all right, Anderson, you hold off on it. Tom, just put the phone down by the guitar gotcha. and start playing. You yeah, start we'll playing too, okay? Okay. You okay. will. Don't worry. Right, hang on. Just don't start beating off at him, all right? I'm too late. He has it all. Yes, guy. he does. <laughs> he knows how to please in every detail. Doing a style, he does it with me. Oh yes, he does. I know that you thought that you knew him. Maybe you did, but you don't. El Capone played a better guitar. He reveals what he wants you to see, and then does shows it all. And when he does, he satisfies me. Just what he could do. You want him to if you only knew. <laughs> yeah, Tom. Yeah, Tom. <laughs>
Beautiful. Oh. Wow. You may have hit one bad chord there, but other than that, that was solid. Yeah, I had to get up right in the middle because the, the box was on was moving, so I had to adjust it. Oh, okay. All right. That's all right. Wow. Tom, is Tom a virgin? Tom, are you a virgin? You know, last time I called, you asked me the same thing. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're not. I have a cold uh, right now. Yeah, well, no, nobody who uh, strums a guitar like that is going to stay a virgin for long. No. I'll tell you that. That's how I lost right it. Right now. All right, now, how did you learn the theme to Taboo 2? Well, I've been listening to you guys forever, and I just I downloaded the MP3 of you singing it, and um, I just figured it out a couple of minutes ago because I was bored. I've been wanting to do it forever, but well, I live in now, Maryland, so it's hard to catch you guys. The next one you got to learn Why is... Why is it hard to catch us in Maryland? Because it's so late? Cause, yeah, it's late. Well, wait a minute. What time are we on in Maryland? I thought, oh, he can't get to us because yeah. we're on later than we air. Right, exactly. I see. You can't yeah. get to us. Right. right. Okay. Uh, the next one you got to learn is got to get it on, which is in the same thing. It's got to get it on, got to get it on. It's a, it's a little more up-tempo. Is it, you know, is it's it, a, is it in Taboo too? Yeah, it is in Taboo too. Hmm. So he doesn't have the he doesn't have Taboo Well, and I, I'm saying, well, hold on a second. Tom, Yeah. go out and get that Taboo too. You could do worse. Okay. Your mom uh, will be very impressed when she finds it. And get that and then call back when you've learned the guitar riff to gotta get it on, gotta get it on. That's a little bit of a cop-out when you're writing a porn song. What's this one going to call, be called? Uh, this one's going to be called gotta get it on. Uh, how's it go? Well, yeah, yeah, let me, let me get Gotta get it on, gotta get it on, gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Gotta get it. Uh, yeah, so this one's got to get it on. Uh, I get nice, it, Bob. Good job. Uh, nice work. Uh, how many weeks you got in on? Got to get it on. Uh, just, just about two and a half. So, <laughs> and you know, whoever wrote that in 1976, 77 thought, oh yeah, this is my break. Yeah, I'm breaking out. Oh yeah, probably. Probably in some legitimate band called. Probably some no, band called. Thinking, uh, uh, next, uh, they, they're scoring up Billy Jack next next month, and I, I, I'm up for it. Probably, yeah. Probably had one of those names like Black Horse or something, <laughs> you know, in this band, sort yeah. of '70s names. Uh -huh. And uh, this was just just something to pay the bills in between the big record contracts that were rolling in. All right, let's uh, hop back to the phones and speak to Dylan. Dylan. Oh, yeah. who's that? Yeah, Dylan, what's up? Um, my mom and dad have been, like, bickering back and forth for, like, the past couple of weeks. And my dad has, has told me that my mom really wants to get a divorce. And I don't really want them to, but then they'd be fighting every day. And I've got a little brother that's six and a little sister that's ten. I was wondering if it'd be better if they just stayed together and fought. Or like actually it's better if they get some help and work things out. Even if they're sort of quasi-unhappy, it's better than breaking everything apart. Well, can you... There's been some studies recently that show that people that come from divorced families, it has an effect to well into your 30s. What are you talking about, Drew? Look at me. <clears throat> Case in point. Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. And then a great sound. Feels so good. Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna bring that in, Drew. I that can't is wait. solid. I can't wait. I'll tell you. Strangely, I like it better than uh, the guys from the other one. The guys from System of a Down know got to get it on. Of course. Well, John is like John you, knows. You can write yeah. the script up from the, of the Taboo Two just from, from memory. <laughs> hey, Dylan. Uh huh. Your parents planning on uh, getting any counseling? I don't think so. Well, here's the thing, Dylan. You can't be responsible for them. Whatever they do is what but, they do. But I certainly would go to them and say, hey, you know, this is affecting us. Why don't you guys, you know, do something that might help this, might heal it, whether you go to your clergy or go to a therapist, whatever it is, get some assistance with this because the breaking apart, each of them are going to find somebody else that's a pain in the neck, too, and yeah. it's not going to be a good thing. It's going to be bad for the younger siblings. Come on. They're, they're, not, they're not beating each other. I mean, gotta it's not, it's not get it on. Gotta situation. get it on. <laughs> Chris? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, you're 21. What's up? Oh, dude, I love you guys. I've, I've listened forever, and I've never gotten through to you before. Here we are. Uh, yeah, seriously. I mean, basically, I just have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah? Hey, um, I just 
I want to know the scientific or medical, you know, explanation or justification for farting. Basically, justification. Why, why did Why did God? We're asking to God. Why did you create such a How thing? Do you, hey, to yeah. thank Him for it, as Adam would. I don't. I don't want to thank Him. I mean, it's a pretty hideous thing. I just. I mean, oh, I really. Oh, wanna... Careful, careful. Adam's getting very offended, Chris. Be careful. Dare you? I mean, because I'm. Dare you I'm attack a, I'm a my hideous hobbies, farter. my livelihood. <laughs> What's that? Love. My I'm, love. Yes. I mean. I mean. I just. My farts are bad. I just, I kind of want to know medically what they are. I mean, I. I uh, well, how's it work, Drew? Well, there's two ways you get the gas. One is swallowing air. And some people, that's more of an issue than others. <laughs> but that is sort of where some of the volume comes from. The smell comes from bacteria in your bowel, which some people have more of. The yeah, split. I don't certain, have enough. Yeah, split certain things you eat into methane gas, basically, and that can have fair volume, but that also is the big thing. I, I tell you, I have not had a good, bad gas day in a year. Just not had a good day. And, yeah. Drew, you know when I've had some good outings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've not had one in this studio, interestingly. I, I haven't had one in the old studio for six months before we left. Oh, my God. Maybe yeah, a year. you had one. No, nah, I mean, Drew, it's been a couple of years. Uh, I mean, I've had some pretty big days over there. Strange enough, just talking about it. I have, you got a gas? <laughs> Drew's got a fart. Drew, don't fart because Drew's farts smell. My farts don't smell. Yours can be awful. <laughs> I mean, it's just awful. I, I know, but here's the thing. <laughs> You're so proud of that, too. It's like, oh, oh, oh. Jeff, no, please, don't, 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 don't. You flatter me. But let me explain. Yeah, Baseball explain. analogy. <clears throat> I am like a ba If I was a baseball player, I, I would strike out or ground out just about every time except and have yes have trouble getting the ball out of the infield almost all the time almost every time then i get up then, then and then i would jack one no, for no, no, 550 you get, you get up to the plate and point to the outfield yeah. point to the deep center right and, and, and Drew, man deliver just drew's pow. been in a couple of those games oh he I'm, comes in and just says it just points to the outfield just points and and just just out of the park. All right, but I've not had one of those days in a long time. And here's my question, Drew. Yes. Adam. Everybody's always okay. Everybody always says, and I've had this argument with Jimmy many, many times because <laughs> he's passionate when it comes to this. He's always like, "Oh, it's what you eat. If I eat clams, I'll do it. it. If I eat this, eat. Oh, that. Right? Okay. But how come I eat whatever all the time, and then one time I'll get gas, Be and I'm always eating the same thing every day. Because probably some spice or legume or something gets in there. Probably. Yeah, come on. You go out I, to I, eat all the time. No, it might I, have been the I, day before. I, I, my, my diet is like a handful of things. It's just no. a handful of things. Some I eat the same thing all the time. Some people just stimulates it when you eat but a lot. But that night I had a horrible gas. I didn't eat a lot. I didn't do anything any differently. I didn't do it. And then there's guys who have it all the time, and it's bad. No matter what. No matter what. Yeah, those things... <laughs> Well, they have your guys, yeah. Cousin Sal. Guys blessed. But some guys are just bad. They're just, yeah, yeah. okay, here's All what I'm time. saying. Everything that comes out of them is bad. Yep. B.O. 95% of what comes out of me makes it makes a good novelty noise, but no, it's not bad. Not bad, yeah. They didn't I blow gas all night, nothing. Yeah. It is. It breaks my heart. Yeah. I blame my parents. But Again. I, I'm just saying, it is your diet, but it's also what's in your gut, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The bacteria that happened to be there that day. Right. But it's what the bacteria are getting. That, that, uh... I'm telling you, Drew, I eat everything and anything in all random orders and all quantities and all different times and nothing. Yeah, yeah. And then once in a while, pow. Oh, yeah. And it's and I would know. I'd say, oh, because I would do you, that every time. You point out of the park and, man, you hit it. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is if that night I well, was blowing horrendous it, gas see. and I said, I won out and I ate Vietnamese tonight and I never eat Vietnamese and this is what's doing it. You eat no, it every night. But that night I had some yeah. asparagus and a piece of chicken, the same thing I have every night. Uh, I That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm, uh, All right. Who are we talking to, Max? Sure. Oh, Max been on hold for a while. Max? Hello? You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Um, Ooh, Jennifer's not even longer. Mm -hmm. What's up, Max? Um, it's about a, an eye twitch. I've uh, I've had it since I was a kid, oh. but it, it'd kind of be there for a few months and go away. Uh huh. And then about two years ago, it came back uh, really, really bad. I mean, like so it's something. It's something that some, somebody can see if they're looking at you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like I I wouldn't okay. even know I was doing it. It was like right. really kind of violent. I guess you could say. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, really intense, and it, it, right. it settled down a little bit since then. Uh -huh. But it, it's still is it both like eyes? Is it is it both eyes? Yeah, both eye? eyes. I mean, really, from like both eyes up to the forehead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they call that blepharospasm? You ever heard that word? Uh, I had it checked out by like a just like my normal doctor, 
Uh, well, he actually just noticed that. Maybe he's gay. Isn't that yeah, how they communicate? I, this, I've seen a patient with this, and, and I would see a neurologist about it because there may mm-hmm. be some anti-epileptic type medication that can help with this and or other medications too. That they, they, If it were one eye, sometimes they even do a surgery for this. Oh, really? Yeah. To make the other one twitch? Yes, of course. So they can have some uh, symmetry? Sure. But this is a blepharospasm is usually what this is called. And you, you should see somebody about it. It can be treated, all right? Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Gotta get it on, gotta get it on. Then the sax comes in. And it shifts gears. Feels so good. Oh, there's other words. Nobody Whoa. wants to hear it. <laughs> Chris, you can say anything. You got it? Right here. Yeah. Gotta get it. Jennifer. Yes. You're 23? Also, yes, I am. And Chris, be yourself. See, this is being yourself. <laughs> I, I have a comment for you, Adam, and then a serious question for Dr. Drew. My comment to you, Adam, is that you are the man. I have got so much respect for you because you speak your mind and are not afraid to say whatever it is you're thinking. And I could eat so much SH for that back here, and so I got mad respect for you on that. Did you hear his, uh, his uh, explanation about violent crimes and rape? It, I, you know, I have to agree with him. You know, I think it's stupid how how they have it uh, figured out like that. You know. Yeah. Well, it's I just uh, like I said. It's uh, like the when you say uh, rape victim and they say uh, rape survivor. Mm-hmm. Any any anybody uses a survivor thing, where it's uh, abuse or a rape or whatever it is, incest, eating disorder. I just I, I automatically hate that person. I don't want to yeah. lessen what happened to the person. It's just better to be, you're not a, yes. Well, first off, every victim who wasn't killed by is their assailant is a survivor. Yeah. Anyone who's been through anything and is alive is a survivor. Right. Yeah, you better better to call yourself a victim. It means someone did something to you. Yeah, survivor. By the way, just oh, because you, so bad for you then. well, just because somebody was a victim doesn't mean they're forever a victim, which is what the implication is, which sort of really reinforces what the person is feeling and protecting them from dealing with that. Right. Yes, look, again, you can be sitting at a, at a stoplight and some drunk driver can broadside you. He T-bones you, you're a victim. doesn't make you any worse a driver, any weaker person. It just means, you, victim just basically means somebody did something to you that you had nothing to do with. And if you still continue to feel like a victim, you better deal with that. Thank you, Drew. All right. <laughs> All right, What's my up, question Jennifer? For Dr. Drew is this. It's about kind of vulgar uh, subject, but um, I've always had a very irregular menstrual cycle. Um, oh, and what vulgar. I noticed, Can't stand it. Mm-hmm. Huh? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, what I noticed was, um, it, didn't, it hasn't really bothered me. I've been to a gynecologist three times. You're lesbian. Specifically regarding, and I'm not a lesbian, um, specifically regarding um, the situation because um, I'm getting to the point where, you know, if I get into a serious relationship, I want to have children. You're um, lesbian. And, they have said oh, there's please. nothing physically like wrong with my reproductive system. I just don't bleed normally. But what my question is is that I've noticed that um, when I have sexual intercourse, when I have sex, every You're a lesbian. time and it's been irregular. Mind, it's not like I'm having regular sex. But if like I like say I I usually have a period maybe three times a year if nothing happens. But if I have sex within a week to a week and a half, I will have one regular menstrual cycle and then it'll go with nothing again until I have sex and it'll come. So basically every time I have sex, I'll get my period, but if I don't... It is very come. common for sex to stimulate bleeding. And because you don't bleed regularly, your endometrium is sort of built up and unstable, so every time you yeah. stimulate it's bleeding. It's like a snow drift. you got to shoot it with howitzer or cannon and knock that, it down so it's not fun. an avalanche. And Definitely you campers sh- don't get caught well, under it. It, it, it has no specific implications about your fertility. Wow, that was However, crazy. you do, when the time comes to have a child, you are going to want to document that you are ovulating and be sure that you don't have polycystic ovaries. But beyond that, there's nothing special about this. You a big gal? Oh, really? You a big gal? I, well, you know, I haven't always been. I'm, I'm a little larger now. You're yeah, fat. True, time, please. I'm fat. Um, mm-hmm. But I haven't always been, and I've always had this problem, even when I okay. was a regular height and weight. Did they do an ultrasound of your ovaries? Um, they did both an external and an internal ultrasound. And did and you have they, cysts? Huh? Did you have cysts? Uh, no, they, they haven't noticed anything like irregular. Like yeah. I said, I'm completely healthy except for the fact that I don't bleed. Okay. What size are you coming in at? <laughs> are you talking about breast or waist? Uh, give me a whole package. Height? 5'8". Uh, and I weigh 255, and I wear a 42 double day. Ooh. You're fat. 
Yeah. Yes. True place. Yes. True place. Hold on. Let me do a little. Oh, okay. Two fifty-five. Two fifty-five. All right. And uh, are you are you gonna get on a do a little exercise? Get on a diet? Hey, you know it's tough. I work overnight. Right now I'm at work. Right now talking to you guys. I do. All right. Well, oh, Jennifer, I see you have a job. Yeah. Well, then you have to be more really obese. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who holds oh, down a job must. You know, I know it's tough. You work. No. It's yeah. I'm lazy too. You know it happens. You know. All right. Listen. What the hell? Let me tell you something. She's fat. She's lazy. She's happy. I say, God bless her. She finds herself a nice skinny black guy, and uh, they'll be happy forever. Look, the the weight does affect ovulation and endometrial stability. For sure, it can make you not ovulate being overweight (laughs) like that. So you might want to look into that. Five eight uh, two five five. You've not uh, been under stout, by the way. Yeah, if you've not been over a hundred under one hundred and seventy, one hundred eighty, all that can definitely affect your uh, your period. You know, it always kills me is when uh, they they set that they're two fifty five. They set that target weight for one ninety. Uh, you know, and it's like, hey, they're walk now, now. Now we got to see them in the ski pants, and it's like, uh, with the, with the now look, this is a relative thing. You you've lost sixty five pounds. So God bless you, but to me, your hundred ninety pound chick is five eight. Got to got to get them ski pants off and uh, put the gauchos on. Yes, true. Gaucho, yes. Okay, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. He's got it all. <laughs> yes, he does. All right, Drew. Let's get a call. Come on. What do you got there, buddy? Ashley, let's talk there. Two. Ashley. Hi. You're 18. Yep. What can we do you for? Um, okay, I've been kind of seeing this guy for like three months. Boring. And, you know, okay, every time I go over there, like, we end up just doing stuff, but he never Boring. does anything to me. He never does anything to me. I always end up doing stuff to him. What do you and, mean? Like, Oral. Like, I always end up, like, going over to his house and, like, jacking him off, and he never, like, does anything to me. What do you want him to do to, do to you? Like, do stuff like... Come over to her house and let her jack him off. What do you want him to do to you? I want him to, like, go down on me or something or anything. You, like, he doesn't do anything. And then, like, he, after he done, he's done coming, he's like, um, I'm getting pretty tired. Or, like, my friends are coming over. And he's yeah. Like, hey, do you, does he think of you as his girlfriend? Um, no. I don't no. know. He might. No. He kind no. of does. He thinks he of might. you the way he, he thinks might. of the guy that, like, cleans his car. No, he thinks of you... Like the way he thinks of the uh, inlet for the water in his jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he, like, always says, like, well, do you want to go out and stuff? He's like, we should go out sometime. And, like, today he came over and he asked about $250. And he's like, I really need it. It's for, like, this drug thing. And I don't know. What? Oh, well, well, that's different. I mean, if he needs to borrow a substantial amount of money for a drug thing, I mean, you got to help him out. <laughs> for a but drug deal? And I haven't ever had a relationship in, like... I can see no, no why. Kidding. Okay, well, so, Ashley, let, 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 break up with this guy. You're not, you're not, she's not with him. All right. Here's when he Don't says break we, up should, with we him. should go out, is when he wants you to come over and jack him off. Yeah. That's, but, that's enough. You're done. I want a relationship, though. All not right. with him. Not with him. Not with him. He's just completely exploiting you. Well, can I, like, talk to him about it? No, like, no. no. Get away from him. bad guy. Right. Stop asking, talking to him. Asking for money. I like it. When, and here's the whole thing. Guys get brazen. Guys will take as much rope as you'll give them. Well, it's almost like they become disdainful at a certain point for these women for uh, for doing this. You know they do. I mean? They don't. They, they lose. They it. lose respect yes. for them, and then they get angry. Yeah, then they take it out on them. Then we're going to really, I'm going to really stomp you down. And then it just you. sort of becomes like, hey, I need money for drugs. Yeah. Hey, come over and jack me off. And then and then they start getting really really uh, disdainful and brazen, and they start talking about going out with their friends, and uh, you know, start talking about other women in front of them. I need some money so I can uh, so I can uh, take this other chick out, and if things don't work out, I'm gonna need you to jack me off at the end of the night. Hopefully, she'll jack me off. But uh, if you could just sort of be on jack off call, yeah, they they get a victim abusive, so just overtly. It's like it's like you've disappointed them. For all women or something. Yes, and if the woman in question, like Ashley over here, had uh, a dad that was less than great, it's game on. It sucks them in. Yeah, they like them even more. I think there's something they're doing wrong. Right, Billy. Oh hi. You're 21. Yeah. What's up? Um, I was just taking a leak. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, this is sick. It's too loud now. I can't hear you because the uh, toilet's flushing. Are you are you an institution or something? He has one of those those. 
Let know? me let me say this. I want this invention. And look, we got way too much crap. There's way too many inventions that we don't we don't really need. We had timer on the toilet, huh? I need that timer. How about a remote flush. control flush? I'll do that too because yeah. I cannot. First off, I do a lot of dumping on the phone. Yeah, I'm on the pot. Well, you have to I'm talking. Use your I'm time. taking a dump. That's how I do it every time. Once in a while, you try to you get that bloop. You know, <laughs> you tr- you try to miss that splash. But I, I swear to God, I do it. I do it about five times a year. Big old dump. Big old pyramid dump. <laughs> big old monolith of 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 Duke in the toilet, and then. I walk away because I don't want to flush. I don't want to flush it while I'm on the phone because I don't want him to hear what we just heard. It's right, embarrassing. Right. And of course, and of course I walk it, away and I forget. And so since you live alone, oh, oh no, no wait a alone. minute. No, wait a minute. No, it's usually the uh, the housekeeper it, and your wife. It happens on the day the uh, house the uh, maid comes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, thank God it's not your wife. She's just like, she big. I mean, the Duke <laughs> actually comes up above the water line. Do you, you know what I mean? I crap like a farm animal. It's not like, oh, there's two or three logs. It's a pile. It's flop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, is, it, is, it is is a pile, and it's like an iceberg. If You know, there's a, 90% of it is under the water, but you'll see the, the peak will stick out. <laughs> farm, okay. Farm animal? Hippo, I, I just hippo. mean in the sense that I, there's, it's not so much extruded log as it is a pile. <laughs> And then, then it sits there, and then the maid finds it in flush, and the maid just must think I'm an animal, because the maid's got to be like, what, what, this jackass is so lazy, can't even turn around and thinks his ass doesn't doesn't stink? Does your wife ever find it? I guess it wait for me, yeah. Oh. Next what caller, please. What does she do? Uh, she, I don't imagine she flushes it. She doesn't uh, complain to you? I, oh, she complains about so much stuff that I don't even know. You know what I mean? This would be it's an such especially, one big complaint This would me. be a poignant, poignant uh, issue for her, I'm sure. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, this, this something really happened, I can tell. No, it just, yeah, once in a while it happens, that's all. It's life in the big city, Drew. Yeah. Billy? All right. I am, this is a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my question is, uh, let's see, um, when two people are having sex, how, come, how, how, how do they both orgasm at the same time? Um, they don't. Oh, they don't? No. Oh. I they they, they do. Them. They do. I mean, if you if you got a chick who has the dignity to fake an orgasm, she can kind of time hers with yours, yeah. like a porn star, and time her fake with yours. It's pretty unusual for people to be able to do that simultaneously. Well, it's it's unusual for women to be able to orgasm during intercourse. Oh yeah, okay. I know that. You say that all the time. Yeah, yeah so that's unusual. It's so. like it's like it's like one of those. It's like saying. You, you know in the halftime of the basketball game when they pull the guy up from the stands and he's wearing loafers and jeans and he hits the half he hits the half court shot for a million bucks? How, how do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah. Well, once in a while the ball goes in. Yeah. That's uh-huh. all. So, like, it's one person that orgasms first, the other guy has to, or somebody has to keep going to get the other person to orgasm? Again. Now listen, I'm not doing orgasm math with Billy. Again, most women. Billy's 21, for Christ's sake. Yeah, do not have it during intercourse. So you have to stop after well, you orgasm and do something yeah. different. Hey, listen, you got to start calling yourself Bill. Bill, stop 21. asking these questions that 16 year olds ask. Everybody wants me to get a job and wants me to change my name to Bill, but. Yeah, how dare they ask him to get a job? What are they thinking? I get Social Security, so it's no big deal. What? Yeah. How do you, why? Why do you get Social Security? I got schizophrenia. Oh, really? Yeah. You taking your medication? I get a shot every like 15 days in my arm. How old? Is it? Um, I'm not. Prolixin. Sure Prolixin. Does it work? I don't mm. know. Well, well wait you, a minute, Billy. Did you you were you doing drugs at the time that made the diagnosis of schizophrenia? Um, I don't think it's the drugs that did it. Were you doing <laughs> drugs at the time we had the no, diagnosis? No, I think that means yes. No, I'm not. No, I wasn't. All right. Because I've seen a lot. You don't sound schizophrenic to me. And I've seen a lot of schizophrenic mis, drug addicts that misdiagnose schizophrenia. Can he work? I don't even know. I think maybe I have like ADD or something. That, it's just really you, old. You, you don't sound schizophrenic. Like how about how about you try to get a job? <clears throat> yeah, I should. All right, for you, buddy. Yeah. All right, buddy. And for Adam. Right. And for me. All right. Okay. All right. Good times. Let's take a little break, Drew. Yes. Well, I, I I just want to contemplate the uh, farm animal reference for a few minutes. Chris almost lost his S when you said that. Well, you know what I'm saying? They're not like cigar tubes. No, I get it. You're not land cable. Right. All right. Sometimes. Really? You never know. That's nice. Thank you. Is that a healthier thing, or is it the farm animal thing a little better for you? What do you What do you like? Yeah, whatever. What do you think? 
It's my. It's either. It's uh, it's either. It's either cigar tubes or soft swar. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> like soft swar. I think uh, you'd be a little more proud of the. Uh, the animal. Any t- animal. Anytime you can come up above the water line, that's, I think that's, that's a, a good pr- day. Impressive. That's impressive. No day. one, it's like subconscious, you, you leave that there to leave your mark and to show people what you you've accomplished. Right. Yeah, you may course, be right. You may be right. All right. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Look at about that phone number. Hey, did my wife call? Anderson? Anderson? I like the way they listen to the show in there. Hey, hey I'm listening, but I, I don't know the answer. Well, her name and well, no, her name was up on the board. <laughs> I know, but you got to say, hold so on. Appar- apparently, she called and she got bored and hung up. Did she want to be on the air? She wanted to ask uh, you about peeing in the sink, Adam. Apparently, at home, or did she want to gloat about the? Um... Turns out, I don't answer the phone, so I'm not quite sure. On the I know you're sitting next right, to somebody that shut does. Up. Shut up, Anderson. Just shut up and do the buttons, would you please? I'm sorry. Thank I'm very you. Sorry. I just shut you. up and do you. the buttons. Sorry. Do the <laughs> buttons. Just shut up and push the buttons. I don't, I don't know the answers to your questions, dude. I'm That's sorry. That's fine. So just push the buttons. Oh, relax, I'm pushing relax. the buttons. I'm just answering the questions the best I know how. Yeah. I'm sorry. Adam, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, dude. Best. Okay. I'm just sorry. Just push the buttons. Sorry. Push the buttons. He's sorry. Sorry. Uh, he's not sorry. He's being a prick. <laughs> and he doesn't answer the first one. Uh, I thought the line was cut off. I didn't know the answer, man. I'm sorry. Right, right. If you don't know the answer, say you don't know the answer. Don't just I, sit there in silence and make us ask if no, you're there. No, I, I was asking the question to get to people in the room with me. All right, all right, all right. What did they What did they say? So we know. Oh, the who cares? Let's just get on with our lives. Let that call back. We'll put you on. No, there. don't call back. It's on here. Let asked one. Drew to ask Adam about peeing in the sink, and that's all she said. Well, he just peed in the sink here. With that was the whole pine nut thing. He he, he uh, perfumed the bathroom here at Carol oh, with please. the pine nut. Untrue. Untrue. Really? Well, listen, don't... Okay, Lynette, if you're listening, don't call the show and then hang up. Oh, who cares? <laughs> Let's just get out of here. Can we go? Who are we going to? Take a line. All right. Eddie. Hey. You're 17? That I am. What's up? Okay, um, I'm just kind of getting off the whole farting subject, but uh, oh. I'm, I'm kind of worried that uh, my girlfriend might have been a, a victim of... Uh, what were you talking about, Duke, not farting, right? Oh, yeah, that actually was, sorry. All right, um, what's up? Uh, she's, uh, she, like, I was actually uh, talking to her on the phone the other night, and uh, we were reading through old uh, conversation logs. My computer saves them. We talk online a bunch. And uh, one of the things that uh, she had said that I hadn't even noticed back, uh, back when she had said it really kind of scared me. And um, when, when uh, I read it, uh, she really started freaking out. Um, she was, uh, it was like the day before Christmas, and she was talking about um, how uh, she wanted her dad to take her to church because she used to be a member of the Catholic Church, uh, but um, he did he wouldn't because he was very uh, quote very focused on a personal project of his that she hates. And I asked her what project, and she said it ties in with other family things, and uh, that she couldn't talk about it. But then she said that uh, she thinks quote uh, he should die, and she hates him for it. Now it's, I'm sure she was saying it in a joking tone, but then there was like this pause. I probably wasn't paying much attention at the time. But then she says, no, I, I, yeah. I, who, "How you wouldn't pay attention? Somebody asking their you know suggesting oh, I am. I do very much. Burn in hell. I mean, let's, you let that go." Yeah, I know, I know. I was actually in a... We were All right, well, Eddie, so far this doesn't tell us really anything except that she's mad at her father. Okay, well... I don't, I don't know what she's mad about. I don't get it. No, right, but okay. believe me, she'll be mad at you, too. If she's <laughs> mad at her dad, you're in trouble. No, no, it's not that at all. It's just like when... Um, oh, it will be that. Okay. How long have you guys been together? Uh, this was in uh, this was previous relationship. We had actually gotten back together. We've been together for two months now, but it's very, very committed. And uh, sure. we're going on for quite <laughs> a while. Why'd you guys break up? Uh, it was actually just uh, stupid teenage stuff. I didn't have my license at the time, uh, and uh, we couldn't get to see each other as much as we had. And uh, so, you mean distance? You, yeah, but okay, all I'm, right. I'm, well, anyway, okay. Um, the reason that it kind of leads me to believe this is because she like uh, is kind of afraid of her parents, and uh, she has a lot of uh, she has she shows she has like a lot of sexual tendencies that are kind of uh, 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 like. Well, Eddie, uh, Eddie, you see, you suspect this. Why didn't you ask her? Well, I didn't want to bring it up. I thought it would be a really, really sensitive subject. Even he, he I actually suspects, asked her when we were yeah. talking about it on the phone. 
So, yeah. But uh, I didn't, like, ask her, have you been abused? I kind of, like, uh, asked her, well, what, what that was about, and she said that she still didn't want to talk about it. She didn't. All right. She couldn't do that. Well, so you're assuming uh, sexual abuse, and um, I, I might I might just go, just plan on the worst. Yeah, I, I don't know what you're going to do about it. Uh, if you're able, if she's able to have stable relationships, then fine. Uh, you know, be supportive. But it's the kind of thing that usually requires some kind of treatment, the consequence. But I bet I, it doesn't sound like sexual abuse to me. I mean, that's not that syndrome usually. Mm, well, look, like you, it's not, you, you guys will go off to college. It's just, like, don't make any waves. Don't talk too much. Just keep it quiet. Re remember to flush your toilet. Don't whiz in the sink. And then don't make any waves. Yes, Drew? We need Lynette to call back. No, I, I, listen, I, I, I want to find out about what you bring up. It's just, I, I'm mad at her now. Since calling up and then hanging up, she's on hold for three minutes. And then you take it out on me, though. What does that mean? Well, you were being sassy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in a bad mood. All right, Drew, want to go to line six? Yeah. All right, let's talk to uh, Shanna, who's 23. Shanna? Shanna. Shanna, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Um, I was dating this guy, and he... Hold on a second. Oh, hold isn't, on. isn't Shauna spelled like Sean and then... I don't know. Let's see how she spells it. Isn't... How would you spell Shanna? Uh, Shana? I, I would, whoops. Oh, six. Oh, what'd I do? Pressed eight or yeah. something? You really... You're... Hey, oh, uh, you hung up on her. I just punched her up. Shauna? Shauna. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah, but even when you say Shauna, she says Shauna. <clears throat> how do you spell your name? S-H-A-N-A. Shauna would be like S H U N A usually. Uh, they're all different spellings. Right, Shauna S H U N A. Yeah, Shana. don't most. What? How do you spell if your girl named Sean? How do you spell that? S H A W N. I guess I don't know. All right, you're Shanna. <laughs> okay, you can call me Shanna. All right, what's up? All right, I was dating this guy, and he shaved his pubic hair, like mm -hmm. everything. And um, I was sort of wondering, I feel kind of dumb for asking the question, because my friends didn't really have any insight, um, how normal that was, because I haven't really been with that many guys. So How old a guy was this? He's the same age as me. He was. We were 22 at the time. Yeah, we would call that not normal, in the sense that most guys don't do that. And my experience has been, it's sort of an aggressive move to shave a lot of things, whether you're shaving your uh, head or shaving whatever. Yeah, no. It's sort just, of an expression of aggression, but it's not off the chart. It's just, it's, it's, it's goofy guy, it's a goofy guy move. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, I thought it was sort of creepy, like. <laughs> How old is he? Well, he's 23 now. He's 22. All right. And he, he went for a clean shave. Yeah, he wasn't a swimmer or anything like that. So. No, no, no. Didn't have a bunch of tats or a bunch of piercings or anything? No, very, very clean cut. All one. right, listen. Uh, kind of a break on this one. Let me tell you something. Guys, when they're bored, yeah. they just focus on their junk. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, what can I do? <laughs> and some, sometimes, I mean, this is how puppetry of the penis came about. Just a bunch of guys staring at their junk, and then they start tugging on it, and they start putting a flashlight under their balls, and the next thing you know, they're doing walk the dog and cats <laughs> in the cradle and around the world right, right. with their nutsack. Of course. And by the way, people go out and watch these things, too, and like, I, just a regular crowd. Just like, oh, hey, guys, uh, he's doing something he calls uh, the turtle. Oh, that's wonderful. Look at him. He takes a sack. He pulls it completely over his penis. Well, yeah, puppetry is coming back. You know, it's, oh, what's it's up nice. with straight guys going and seeing that kind of stuff? Is this guy tugging on his sack? It's comedy. Uh, I think it's faggotry. Angela? Yes? You're 18? Yes. What's up? Um. Okay, I'm going to try to give you the short version of my story. Um. Uh, about two weeks ago... Um, I went to this hotel party, and it was just my friends and I, and, um, you know, I, I had a boyfriend at the time, and um, by the end of the night, like, I had a couple of drinks. At the end of the night, um, I, I asked him to come and pick me I asked my boyfriend to come and pick me up. So when he comes and picks me up, he comes inside the hotel, and I'm inside the bathroom naked. <laughs> what was I doing naked? I have no idea, but I know nothing happened. Like, it was just my... Are you leaving out the fact that you were naked with somebody in the bathroom? No, no, no. There was nobody in there. It was just by myself. With right. your clothes off? Yes. Yeah? So what? So he, he sees that I'm naked, right? And he's mad. he got mad, and he, and he breaks up with me a couple of days after, right? All right. So um, 
Well, he's telling me that he can't forgive me, that he doesn't trust me anymore. Yet, um, when he broke up with me, he said that he still wanted to keep seeing me. He still wanted to talk to me. And um, lately, he's ever since that day, like, he's been treating me like crap. And But yet, when we see each other, he acts like as if we're t- still together. Like, he still hugs me. He still tells me he loves me and all that. My question is, should I just, should I stand by him and let him treat me like this? I mean, is this... No. Uh, I don't understand what you did. You went to a party. You got drunk. You went to a hotel. He's a controlling guy, and he got freaked out. What were we doing at the hotel? Whose hotel well, room no. was it? Um, well, it was just a, um, just some friends just went to go um, get it because uh, it was like kind of like a going away party for my other friend because she was leaving, and um, it was just a little kickback, I guess you would say. And, in, in a ho- in a hotel? Yeah. Just women there? Just girls? Yeah. And, no. well, there was, like, two guys, but it was one of the girl's boyfriend, and the other guy was the... the okay, whatever. Well, whatever. He, he can't tolerate the behavior and the drinking and stuff, and that's him. You know, that's... He, he, I don't think break up. Yeah. He wants to break up, you break up. I don't you think find a good work. guy. Yeah. Find another guy. Find a better guy. Find a guy who likes uh, finding a naked, strange bathroom <laughs> drunk, all right? Okay. Uh, all right, don't worry about it. Just break up. Right. You don't have to please him. Oh. I'm the only one you have to worry about pleasing. All right. All right. right. Good times. We'll be back. Well, that's the show. Some highs, some lows. We really ran the gamut tonight, huh? We really did. We uh, we sung uh, the Taboo 2 (laughs) thing. Actually, all of them. All right. Is it all? Yes, he does. All right. Good times, uh, everybody. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. And so until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. He has it all. Yes, yes he does. He, does. <laughs> he knows how to please in every detail. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.